My, my, my. Praise. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on. I'm excited about what He has in store for the year 2012. All right. Amen. Come on. I believe with all my heart that we have yet to see the greatest things that God has in store for us. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. I know we are few in number tonight. And some people might think, well, why in the world? Well, they probably thought that about Noah. Amen. Yeah. When he was about 60 years into building the boat and he still didn't have nobody but his family, right. he kept on building the boat. Amen. Amen. Why? Because God told him to build the boat. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If he'd have stopped at about 50 years or so and said, well, you know, it don't seem to be catching on. It don't seem like I'm getting enough people involved. He would have drowned with the rest of them. Amen? Amen. But he stuck to it because God told him what to do and he obeyed the voice of the Lord. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. If I got any advice for you tonight, it would be don't go by what the people want. Go by what the voice of the Lord tells you to do. Right. Amen? Hallelujah. And stick with it. Yes. I want to talk to you tonight for just a very, very few minutes. We've already had church. Amen. But this afternoon, when Brother Tyler failed to get anything, he was going to preach tonight, but he said he can't get nothing, so <laughs> hallelujah. I begin to read about faith yeah. and study on faith. Praise God. My, my, my. And if it hadn't have been, I'd still, if, if I hadn't have came to myself, I'd still be at home studying. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Because one scripture leads to another scripture. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. And I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight about faith. The book of James says in yeah. the second chapter and the 18th verse. Yeah. Go with me there tonight. I only have about 45 scriptures. We'll get to about half of them, maybe. James, the second chapter, the 18th verse. James 2 and 18. How many of you have a King James Version? Let me hear you say Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you have something other than that, I'll set this trash can out here for you so you can put it in there. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. <clears throat> no, there's some good in all of them. Amen. amen. At least in the versions that I've been coming in contact with. Right. But the problem is a whole lot of good's been taken out. Right. Amen. amen. See, that's how the devil deceives. He's got a little bit of truth. Amen. Right. He's got a little bit of truth. That's what he does to try and get you hooked. Amen. And once he's got you, he's got you. James, the that's second right. chapter, the 18th verse. It says, A man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. But James says, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Did you hear that? Let me read it again. Somebody wouldn't pay attention. A man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Right. Amen? Faith never acted upon is dead. Amen? Right. You can say that you have faith, but unless you put that faith in action... Unless you take a stand on the truth of the Word of God where your faith is supposed to be. Amen? Yes. The Bible says the devil believes and trembles. Isn't that what it says? That's Demons, right. baby. I don't know exactly what it says, but it says even the devils believe and tremble or fear and tremble, whatever. If you believe it's one God. They believe. Amen? The devil believes. Mm -hmm. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. Yes. The devils also believe yes. and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, or that hits all of us, that faith without works is dead? Right. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? Yeah. And by works was faith made perfect? Yes. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Right. Let me read that a little bit slower. See if we can figure out what went on here with Abraham. He was justified by his works. Now what works is he talking about? Talking about the fact that he offered up Isaac. Amen? Yeah. He offered up Isaac his son upon the altar. 
And then he says, see how that, his, that faith wrought with his works. By works was faith made perfect. Come on. Now, where was Abraham's faith whenever he walked up that hill and he laid Isaac down on the altar? It was in God. Of course, we know that. Yeah. But do you remember the promise that God had made to Abraham? <clears throat> He took him, out, took him out there and he showed him how that the stars of the sky, you know, cannot be counted. He said, that's how your seed's going to be. That's right. Amen. Amen. So his faith was in what God had already told him. His faith was in the Word of God. Amen. God had already told him that Isaac was the seed. Amen. And that his seed was going to be so many that you couldn't count them. Amen. So when Abraham walked up that hill with Isaac and with the wood and with the with the with the knife and with the fire, Amen. Getting ready to lay him down on that altar, his faith was not in man. His faith was not in his own works that was fixing to take place. His faith and the reason he was even even doing the work was because of his faith in the Word of God that. God said, this is your seed. I will multiply your seed. That's why he turned to the men and said, me and the lad's going to go up there and we will be back because he knew the Word of God was infallible and if God said it, that settled it. So his faith was in the Word of God. Yes, sir. If I have some advice for you today, it would be for you not to put your faith in man. Not to put your faith in doctrine. Not to put your faith in denominationalism. Not to put your faith in religion. But to put your faith in the Word of God. Amen? The Bible says not one jot... Not one tittle will pass away. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will be gone, but my word will remain. Amen. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not my word. Amen. Amen. Not a one job, not one tittle. I'm here to tell you tonight. I don't believe one comma, not one period, not one but, not one and, not one the. I don't believe any of it will pass away because it is the word yeah. of God. Amen. And if you put your faith in the Word of God, yeah. you will be founded upon a solid foundation yes, tonight. Amen? Yes. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace are you saved. You don't have to turn there. You know this by heart. Amen. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith. faith. Amen? And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Oh. Not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible says four times in Habakkuk 2 and 4, Romans 1 and 17, Galatians 3 and 11, and Hebrews 10 and 18 that the just shall live by faith. Amen. If you make it through this year, it will be by faith. Amen. If you make it to heaven, it will be by faith. Amen. If you make it to the end of your journey and cross the finish line, it will be because you put your faith in the Word of God. Honey, men will let you down. I've had some of the best people I thought that they hung the moon, stabbed me in the back. Amen. And knocked me down and step over me and just keep on trucking. But Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the world, He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And honey, you can bank on that tonight. Yes, sir. You can That's count true. on His Word. Amen. But Brother Billy, I don't feel it. Don't matter. Feeling ain't got nothing. Your feelings take you to hell. That's right. Can I say that again? Come on. Your feelings will take you to hell. I don't feel like going. You're going to have to push on through that. Come on, you ain't never going to feel like going. Amen. Amen. I don't feel like doing it, but you're going to have to push on through that because you ain't never going to feel like doing it. Amen. Amen. Tell your old flesh what I tell my flesh. I don't think he felt like climbing up Golgotha's hill after they had ripped his back to shreds with the cat of nine tails. I don't think he felt like standing before Pilate and taking the criticism and the abuse that he took. I don't think he felt like standing there, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and allowing them to drive the, 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 the thorns down into his head. I don't I don't think he felt like that, but because he knew he had a purpose, he knew he had to do the Father's will, he pressed through his feelings, he was flesh and bone just like me and you, he got tired like me and you did, he got, he, he got weary like me and you did, but he kept on pushing, his own flesh tried to get in the way, but he kept on pushing, he kept it under, he kept on going, he said, I must work the works of the Father while it is day because the night soon cometh when no man can work. Amen. 
Got to push on through. Praise God. Got to push on through. On, Paul said, I press. I press toward the prize. I press toward the mark. That prize, that high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Paul knew what it was like to press. Honey, if you spent midnight in a jail, in a Philippian jail with blood running down in your sandals, you know what it's like to press on through. And he didn't sit there singing gloom, despair and agony on me. The Bible says him and Silas begin to have church because they felt they like it and all. Oh, baby, listen, you got to get past that. You can't come into church and sit there and wait for God to move you. Sometimes you got to get up and you got to move God. Amen. Sometimes you got to begin to lift up your praises and true. begin to worship Him. That's right. It takes faith for you to worship when you don't feel nothing. Yes, sir. It, it takes faith for whenever it seems like everything is coming at you. Yeah. Hell and high water. Yeah. It takes faith to still stand on God's Word Amen. and say, I don't understand. Listen, faith doesn't mean you're some superhuman. Right. Amen. Amen. That's right. We're talking about what real faith is. Amen. Real faith is like what Job, and oh, I like Job, but he struggled. Yeah. Amen. Come on. But faith is when you say, though God slay me, yeah. yet I will serve Him. Amen. 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 Faith is when you're walking through and you've lost your children, you've lost all your cattle, you've lost all your wealth. The only thing you got left is a nagging wife that's telling you to curse God and die. Yeah. And he's still, in his weakest points, in the time whenever he struggled with his faith the most, he said, I know that my Redeemer lived. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, I might go through some, I've been going through some things. Amen. And the devil might say, hey, look here. Look what I put on you. Yeah, but devil, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know he's alive and I know that his word, I can count on it tonight. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. Everything the devil's got, he might hit you with in the morning. That's good for Amen. Amen. I ain't one of them manby pamby feel good mess you see on television. I'm going to take it, and I can't take it tonight that everything's going to be okay with you as far as you're never going to go through nothing or you're never going to go through a trial. Amen. I can tell you more than likely you are going to go through something. More than likely you are going to go through a trial. But honey, if you'll hang on to the Word of God and put your faith in what does say of God, you will go through. You will not stay. You will go through. Through Come on, brother. that trial, Come on. if you put your faith in Amen. the Word of God, that's the only thing that's going to get you out of here. That's it. Is faith in His Word, right? Not in feeling it. Come on. And I like to feel it. Amen. I feel it tonight. Yes. Amen. Come on. But it ain't my feeling. If I want my feeling, I'd quit a long time ago. I know you think, because I come in here every Sunday morning and I take this mic and I stand up here with a smile on it that I'm feeling it, but I ain't always feeling it. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I ain't always feeling it. Yeah. Amen. Come on. But for your sake yeah. and for mine, I get up here anyway. Oh. And I just smile yeah. and I go on by and wave at the devil. Amen. Because he don't never learn. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything is going to be okay because God's Word says yeah. it'll be okay. On, Amen. My goodness. I'm about to lose my voice. Listen to this. The Lord hit me with this. I didn't have His Scripture down, but go with me to... to uh, we're talking about having faith in His Word tonight. Amen. Right. I'm going to keep an eye on my watch. Hallelujah. It ain't going to bother me none, but I'm going to watch it. I'm going to look at it every <laughs> now and And when you'll think I'm keeping up with the time when I really don't... I could care less. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The uh, Matthew, the 8th chapter... <clears throat> Matthew the 8th chapter. Uh, let's start about the 5th verse. Matthew the 8th chapter, 5th verse. Oh, I feel like I can. I wish I could find the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. He can't stay in faith. Amen. That's right. Oh, he likes, he likes that spirit Thomas had. I believe it when I see it. If I see it, I believe it. See, he don't understand you. He don't understand you, Brother Rod. I'll use you. Yeah. Brother Rod texted me this afternoon. He said, we're at Owensboro. Please pray. I'm having one of those breathing attacks. Mm. Felt like he's going to pass out. Mm. He don't understand why you didn't stay home tonight. Yeah, that's right. Because he knows if it's him, he would. Mm. <laughs> he don't understand that you stand on God's Word even though you feel like you've been ran over by a semi-truck. Amen. Amen. He don't understand how that He got you sick. 
He got you doubting. He got you in a bad mood. He got you and your husband or you and your wife. He got y'all fighting today. This is stop them. They ain't going to go to church tonight. They've been into it all day long. Yeah. Yet that faith that you have in God's Word amen, causes you. You're here tonight because you have faith. Come on. If you didn't believe, you wouldn't be here. Amen. You'd be home or you'd be in beer joint or doing something. Right. Amen. But you believe. That's right. In spite of every natural circumstance that you see, yeah. in spite of the fact that the devil has told you to give up, Come in on. spite of the fact that those words might even came from your mouth, Come on. you're still here. Yeah. You're still out there. You're still trusting God. You ain't gave up on him yet. Why? Because you have faith in his word. Amen. Listen to what Jesus says here, and this is interesting. What did I say go? Matthew 8 and 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came, to, came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Oh, now, my goodness. You think it's centurion? Oh, but see, Jesus is getting ready to see faith. Come on. Oh my goodness! Praise I could Lord. preach tonight if I had a license. Oh, man. Hallelujah! What is that? <clears throat> and saying, "Lord, my servant lies in the house and he's sick," and Jesus said, "I'll come. I'll, I'll heal him." And the centurion in verse eight responds this way. This is curious. This is something he had Jesus hadn't faced with before. I don't hadn't been faced with at least not in Scripture. The centurion answered and said, "Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only." Somebody say, "Speak the word only." Speak the word. Oh, you can say it better now. Somebody say, "Speak the word only." Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed, for I am a man under authority. He goes on to say, "Having soldiers under me, and I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth. And I say to another man, He goes on to tell him. He says, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. Yeah. When Jesus heard what this centurion said, the Bible says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled. Right. You won't find that very many times. There wasn't very many times that Jesus was taken aback mm -hmm. at somebody's actions. Come on. Not that he wasn't God and didn't have foreknowledge. I'm not saying that, but I'm telling you, this is the only time the Bible says that he marveled. Because hmm. you know, there were times he knew what the Pharisees were thinking. They didn't have to open their mouth. Yeah. Amen. Come on. He marveled. And maybe just for the benefit of those there, but he said, Verily I say unto you, I have not found, verse 10, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Faith in what? What did he tell him? He said, if you speak it. Amen? Listen. Listen to what he said. He said, speak the word only. Yeah. Brother Mike said something a couple of Tuesdays ago, or maybe last Tuesday. I know he meant it comical. But it struck me. He said, and I know this is a pretend situation, but that if God tried to lie, it would be the truth. And what I got from that, and of course Brother Mike went on to say, of course he won't do that and all. He said, I'm just saying. What he really was trying to say, or the way I took it, yeah. was that when God speaks it, it comes into being. That's it. Amen? Right. If you had green hair tonight and God said you had red, guess what? It's red. Amen? If you had yellow hair tonight and God said black, it'd be black. Come on. Because that which He speaks, see, His words were spirit and life. Yeah. His words are still spirit and life. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. My goodness. Come on. Spirit and life. Somebody said, Jesus said, I'm going to lay my life down. I'm going to take it back up. Somebody said, how did he do that? He was dead. Yeah, but he'd already spoken. Yeah. Come on. Woo! He had already spoken yeah. that he would rise from the dead. Amen. Yeah. Those words were spirit and life. Those words were spirit and life, and they could not be stopped. Yeah. They could not. 
My goodness. Hallelujah. They could not be stopped. I got news for you. There ain't a devil in hell tonight that can keep all things from working together for your good as long as you love God and the call according to His purpose. There ain't a devil in hell tonight that can cause any weapon that is formed against you to prosper. There's not a devil in hell tonight that can keep you from making it as long as you put your faith in the unadulterated, undiluted Word of God. Hallelujah. That will be here when everything else goes. That's right. Oh, I feel good. Praise the Lord. And he rubs them up all on you, brother. Right? Come on. Put your faith in God's word. Yes, sir. When you get up and the devil says give up, yeah. stand on God's word. Come on. When the devil says you ain't going to make it, stand on God's Word. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I like what I read over there. Praise Let God. me find it. I can't give all this to you tonight. Yeah. I may pass out. Y'all pack me home, won't you? Hallelujah. In Joshua, the sixth chapter, yeah. the children of Israel facing the great walls of Jericho. Yeah. And the Lord comes to Joshua. Oh, my Lord and my God. The Lord comes to Joshua. The Bible says, I'm going to try to read a little bit of this if I can get control of myself here. Oh, yeah. Joshua, the sixth chapter, in the first verse says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, none went out, none came in. Oh, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Yeah. And ye shall come past the city, all men of war, and go around the city once. This shall thou do for six days. And seven, oh my goodness, and seven priests shall bear the, the ark, and, and seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Are you with me so far, church? Amen. The priests shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and people shall ascend upon every man straightway before him. All right. Now, here we have the greatest walls in opposition that the children of Israel have faced so far since crossing over the Jordan River. Yeah. And God says to them, mm -hmm. march around the walls. Yeah. And you know what Joshua did? Mm -hmm. Exactly what God told him. March. March. And as they march, listen, I got this probably in revelation to you. It may be to some of you out there. As he marched, his faith and confidence was not in the ram horns they were going to blow. It was not in the marching they were going to do. His faith was not in the shout that was going to be made on the seventh day. His faith was in what I just read to you. God said it. I believe it. And it's true. Amen. 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 So he marches around the walls just like God said. Yeah. They go around day one. They go around day two. Some of them probably thinking Joshua done lost his mind. Yeah. They go around day three. They go around day four. Some of them saying, I'm tired of this. I've ate so much dust. I can, I can spit out a, a dust biscuit. Amen. Mm -hmm. They go around five. They go around six. And the seventh day is coming and Joshua's getting more excited because God done told him what's going to happen. Yeah. Amen. I get excited a little bit every day every day because I know I'll get a little bit closer to home. Because I already read the back of the book and I know that the authors wrote it and it's finished and they can't no devil in hell stop it. Amen. I'm gonna be one of those over there that's robed in white, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. As long as I got faith in his word, I'm gonna stand over on the other side before the throne of God, and my name's gonna be found written in the Lamb Book of Life. Not because of my religion, not because of my denomination, not because of my talent, but because of my faith in what the saying God. If we can get our faith in God's Word, there ain't a devil that can knock us down. Amen. That's true. Because we can make it. Yes, sir. So they march around and on day seven, guess what happened? Whoa. Guess what happened, Brother Isaac? They shout. They blow the horns. Uh-oh. And let's see if God let him down. Verse 20 says the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. And it came to pass that the people heard the sound of the trumpet. The people shouted with a great shout. And the wall fell down flat. Yeah. Somebody say in the wall. Oh. Fell down flat. Fell down flat. Why? Because God's word said it would happen. Yeah. And I got news for you. Where's he at? He ain't here. He left while ago. Uh, somebody go find the devil. Yeah. No, he already knows. Yeah. God's word is true. true. 
God is not a man that he should lie. Right. What he speaks, it will accomplish that which he sends it forth to do. Right. When Paul said, I am persuaded yeah. that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Right. He had faith in God's word. Come on. He had faith in God's word. Amen. Brother Rodney, don't go by the way you feel, son. Mm -hmm. Go by what his word says. All right. Amen. If you'll be faithful over a few things, it'll make you ruler over many. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. His word, Brother Dave. That's what he'll get you through. That's right. I don't have no gimmick to give you tonight. Oh, I got the answer is the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's oh, I'm old fashioned. Come on. If you ain't learned that by now, you you maybe you don't know it now. Come on. The word of God is where your faith yes. needs to be. Come on. When you take on that armor, Amen. Amen. And it tells you above all. Come on. Take that shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Right. Arm yourself with the Word. Come on. When Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil came in, what did he do? He quoted the Word to him. Amen. Yes. Jesus was the Word made flesh. Right. I got to think about that little widow woman over there in First Kings. Come on. There she is out there scrounging around for enough to just barely make a meal for her and her son. Yeah. Prophet of God comes by and he says. Bring me a little bit of water. She says, well, I can do that. So she goes and gives him some water. But on her way, he says, and uh, I'm a little hungry. Yeah. Bring me a morsel of bread. Mm -hmm. Bring me something to eat. Right. And she stops and she says, oh, I was gathering two sticks so I could prepare what little bit we had. Me and my son going to eat it and then we're going to die. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Oh, what's Elijah tell her? He said, you go. Oh, listen to this. I like this. <clears throat> It's in 1 Kings 17. I know I'm jumping around. You don't have to go there. You can go there later. 1 Kings 17 chapter. It says uh, in the 11th verse, says, as she was going to fetch, fetch it, talking about the drink of water, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, please, just, just a, a morsel of bread in your hand. And the Bible says, she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. Behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it. For me and my son that we may eat it and die. Listen what the prophet says to her. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. But, you hear that? Yeah. If he'd have stopped right there and said, Go and do as thou hast said, she'd have ate their bread and they died. Yeah. Thank God for buts. Amen. In the Bible and in the pews. But, Elijah says, Make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. What she do? She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Where'd she put her faith, church? In the word that Elijah spoke. Yeah. Do you think she became somebody? This woman was struggling. She was seeing her baby starve to death in front of her. Do you think she became some kind of superhuman Christian and never doubt? You've seen those before. Hey, might as well put a big S on their chest and give them a cape. Because they're so spiritually minded. They're so heavenly minded they ain't no earthly good. That's for the truth. All right. Amen. They're so, they're so hypocritically minded they ain't no earthly good. Yeah. But they never doubt. They never struggle. Right. All of us struggle. Amen. Amen. There ain't a human being on this earth other than Jesus Christ that has not ever doubted. Amen. Right. That has not ever fought that struggle, that battle like we talked about Sunday morning, Amen. like Jacob and wrestling. Yeah. So this woman didn't become no superhero. She just simply put her faith in God's Word. Right. God said, if I would give this to the prophet, that my meal barrel ain't going to go empty, my cruise of oil it ain't going to waste, and we're going to have something to eat. Hallelujah. Come on. I don't know that she... I felt it right there, but I don't know that she did. Yeah. She may have just made her way to the barrel saying, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to trust the Word. 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 Amen. So she makes it. She gives it to the prophet. And he eats and then they eat. Yeah. 
And I don't think she got no truckload of meal delivered that afternoon. I think the next day she went back to the meal barrel believing God's Word, just like she believed the day before, and she opened the lid on that old empty meal barrel. Amen. And it wasn't empty no more. Hallelujah. Because she had her faith in the Word of God. Hallelujah. His Word is alive. His Word is powerful. And it made it sharper than any two-edged sword. And heaven and earth will pass away that His Word will remain. So what happens? She goes and she does according to the word of the Lord. And listen to what the Bible says. And she and he, and I'm in verse 15, 1 Kings 17, she and he in her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, just like God said. Neither did the cruise of oil fail, just like God said, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Every one of us has been given the measure of faith. Amen. You have faith. You know, I've heard people say, I just don't have any faith. Sure you do. Right. Sure you do. You had to have some faith in that company you work for to put in those 40 hours without seeing a dime. Yes, sir. You expect them to pay you Friday. Right. That's a little bit of faith. Amen. Amen. My goodness, the just shall live by faith. You ain't going to make it without faith. Amen. You're going to lay it home and die right. without putting your faith in God's Word. Amen. Can't go with the way you feel. Right. Can't go over the waste. I know that you think you can't give nothing because you can't hardly pay your bills. But if you'll give to God first, yeah. right. He's already said it. Right. In the book of Malachi, He made a promise and God's promises never expire. Right. Amen? Come on. They don't have a little... I got some coupons out yesterday, I think. Maybe today. Got them out and looked at them. They had expired in December, so I had to throw them suckers away. Yeah. But you can get out these promises today from God some 2,000 years ago. Yes, sir. And they still are as fresh today as they've ever been. Right. They do not expire. Amen? Right. He said over there in the book of Malachi, if you would give your tithe and your offering, Amen? Yeah. And I don't care what those panel on Ask the Pastor on TV said. The tithe is the tenth. Amen? Come on. If you'll give your tithe and your offering, what did He say do? He'd rebuke the devourer. He'd open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. He'd rebuke the devourer. Amen. Blessings you not be able to contain. Yeah. Simply if you trust His... Not that you're putting... You don't put your faith in the money you put in the offering. No. You put your faith in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Your faith is in God's Word. Right. I, my faith doesn't rest in how many people we have in here on Sunday morning. Come on. That's why I don't have one of those boards you see at churches where it tells how many people was here. Yeah. Amen? Right. I want the pews filled, Amen. but that has nothing to do with whether Brother Billy will be here Sunday morning or not. All right. I am here and will stay here until God says otherwise. All right. Amen? Praise God. Because I'm standing on God's Word. Yes, sir. And not on the promises of people. Come on. People let you down. Yeah. Amen. But God won't. We had two people, whenever we first started out, we didn't have Sunday morning service. Y'all know that. We had two people that told us, you have Sunday morning service, I'll be there. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah. <clears throat> one of them still with us, Brother Sleaze. All right. The other one came one time. One time. So you can't depend on people. Right. We've had people come through here and say, you know, I ain't never felt nothing like this. Mm -hmm. They used to say, I ain't never felt nothing like this, or I ain't felt this in years. I'll be back. Ain't seen their face since. But God's word is true. Amen. And they may not lie on intentionally. Stuff happens. Yes. Amen. But God, stuff don't affect God. Right. It affects us, but it don't affect things. Don't affect God. Right. Amen. It affects us. Come on. Amen. It may it may affect whether you have joy in the morning or not. Yeah. But it don't affect God. Come on. Amen. It doesn't change. Whether you have a good day tomorrow in your mind or a bad day, God's still the same God today as He will be tomorrow. Amen? Right. And His Word is always going to be there. Amen. And you can trust His Word. Amen? Right. Oh, i got so much other stuff up here, but I ain't going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Put your faith in His Word. Amen. You can trust His Word. Yes, sir. When all else fails, trust His oh. Word. Stand on His Word. Yeah. When everybody else walks away, He'll never leave you, never forsake right. you. You can trust His Word. Come on. Put your faith in God's Word, and that will see you through. Right. I don't know how many more times I can say that, but I feel an urgency in my spirit to tell you, put your faith, not in feelings, 
Not in man. Not in religion. Not in your denomination. But in God's Word. Amen. In God's Word. That's Amen. True. Hallelujah. Somebody else has something tonight.